it's Marla Martinson and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid and I am who I know I'm in the valley and it's in the summer but I'm really hot I, we have a hot subject to talk about today okay I am with Dr. Stuart Fishbein and he's an OB which he'll get into all the <laughs> he's a gynecologist okay? it's he's an inside a, joke right he's an expert and and the reason I welcome Stuart welcome Thanks, Marla. So the reason that I have Stuart on is because I'm a matchmaker, and I've been a matchmaker for many, many years. And uh, the men are in my model. The men are the paying clients. They're looking for the love of their life, a wife, somebody to settle down with. Some of these men want children. They want a family. The women come into my database. These lovely ladies. And over the years, I've had women who are 39. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, that say, Marla, I want kids. I still want kids. And I've done a lot of delving into this. I have I was pregnant for a short time myself in my 40s, had a miscarriage. Uh, so I did a lot of research on my own. And, and the statistics are not good, but I don't want to be the one to tell the women that. They get mad at me. I get emails. I heard that you don't think women over 40 can have a kid. So I thought, I'm going to have an expert on. So Dr. Fishbein, please tell us the 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 stats, the the bad news and the good news, and just what 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 do I what do we do here? <laughs> okay, well the 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 news shouldn't be surprising to anybody, but you know uh, women have a peak fertility rate that usually peaks at around age eighteen or nineteen, and then gradually over the next the rest the remaining of their menstrual life will gradually decrease. But even at the peak, uh, the term for the ability to conceive in any given month is called fecundity. The peak fecundity of a human female is about 20, and maybe even for the sake of math, we'll just stick at 20% per cycle. So just as an example, if 100 women had unprotected intercourse at age 20, everybody thinks that, oh, if they're in college, they're definitely going to get pregnant. Well, no, actually, only 20 to 25 of them are going to get pregnant in the first month, and about 80% are not going to be pregnant. And in the second month, 20% of the remaining 80 or 16 more will get pregnant. And that's sort of how it works. And so by six months, you basically have about two thirds of women at age 20 will be pregnant. Um, of, the, of the one third remaining, most of them have nothing wrong with them. They just haven't hit the, 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 the so-called jackpot. And that's, and that's the peak. And that's at about 18, 20 years old. Gradually over time, and it remains about that high for the next decade or so, but in the 30s, it begins to decline. And Statistics do never never apply to the individual. So there are women who will get pregnant the first time they try at age 44, but the odds are very much against you at that point. You, the fecundity or the ability to conceive in any given cycle by age 40 is somewhere between 5 and 8%, which means that 90, 92 to 95% of women at age 40 who try to conceive in a given month are not going to be successful. Now, if they try for five or six months, generally they're, you know, you're going to get a third or, or 40% of them that are, and the rest are, are going to end up going to see somebody for fertility evaluation or something to find out what's going on. But that's just nature's way of ensuring the survival of the species is that we are meant to reproduce. Actually, by the time you start getting your menstrual period at age 13, obviously, biologically, you're ready to reproduce at that time. Socially, you're certainly not ready to reproduce at that time. Right. Now, so I also had somebody say that, uh, well, women keep producing eggs, so it's no problem. But we are, aren't we born with all the eggs we'll ever have? Well, you're, you're, the number of eggs in your ovaries peaks when you're an embryo, and then it begins to decline. And the number that I heard that you're born with is about 300,000 eggs. You do not make more eggs after you are born. And you think about 300,000 eggs, that sounds like a hell of a lot of – can I say that? Yeah, I guess I can. It's yeah, you can say yeah. eh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's a heck of a lot of uh, eggs. However, and just think, if somebody has menstrual periods from age 13 until they're 53 – that's 40 years of menstrual periods. That's 12 eggs a year. That's 480, I'm doing my math right, 480 eggs. So what happens to the other 299,520 eggs? Well, each month, not only does one egg develop, or sometimes two, and that's how you get fraternal twins, but a lot of the eggs will start, and then the follicles will degenerate, and those will disappear. And over time, the number of follicles that are actually functional will gradually disappear, until you reach the uh, menopause, at which case you have no more, your ovaries no longer respond to the, um, the pre hormone that your brain is sending out to get your uh, ovaries to work called follicle stimulating hormone. So even and if you, that, and even if you haven't had, had menopause, let's say you're 48 and you haven't had, you know, uh, it's still very uh, 
remote chance that you would get pregnant. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very unlikely that you'll get pregnant spontaneously at age 48. I mean, it does happen, and we all hear anecdotal stories of that happening. And most of the time when you see in the news that some actress or athlete or somebody is having a twins at age 45, you can almost bet your bottom dollar that they had in vitro fertilization, they didn't really get spontaneously pregnant on their own. Yeah, I think these a lot of these, misinformation out there. I, I think these celebrities are really making having women of a false uh, hope because they see all these women in their forties and fifties having kids, but they're usually twins, and that's because they've had the in vitro. Now, something else that's interesting: women will say, "Yeah, but I'm so healthy, and I look. Yeah, I may be." 41, but I look 31, and so um, I, when I was in my late 40s, people would say, hey, do you and your husband have kids? And I'd say no, and they go, oh, well, you've got plenty of time. I mean, I was like, what planet are you on? And uh, so there, I just dis say, dispel this myth, if it's a myth. It doesn't matter what you look like or how good of shape you're in or how healthy you are, right? It's if those eggs are viable or not is, the, is yeah, that that's, in general that's correct again we can't we can't say for any given individual woman but overall that doesn't matter how uh, good your genetics are as far as your skin tone or your hair or anything else um, your your ovaries will uh, age at, at, at a standard rate uh, on average and so you really can't you, you shouldn't really be delaying childbearing until that long I mean a lot of women at this point are and and that's partly, and this, this may sound a little bit uh, old-fashioned, but women were sold a bill of goods by the feminist movement um, maybe 20 or 30 years ago and told that they could have it all and that they were nothing if they stayed home and had children and they had to go out and get a career. And I can't tell you, Marla, you probably can confirm this, that I see women every week who come to my office in their 40s who, who are very successful in their careers and all they really want to do is quit and have a baby. And, you know, but they but they bought into the, the feminist thing that you're, not, you're nobody. And so they delayed it for way too long. Yeah. Now, of course, we have technologies nowadays, which makes it a lot easier for these women to um, get pregnant, although it may not even be with their own egg. You basically use donor eggs. Um, you find a donor uh, through their, their donor banks and uh, all over the city, uh, all over the country, actually, who, who uh, if you get there, you know, you can get a 20 year old's egg or you could maybe even get a relative's egg if you want to, and then you can carry the baby. Your uterus is quite competent at carrying the baby, and the risks to a 45-year-old woman of carrying a pregnancy once uh, um, it, it's confirmed that the pregnancy is viable are very are not that great, uh, greatly, uh, over, there's not a greater risk, excuse me, over, over people that are 25. There's a slightly greater risk of gestational diabetes or hypertension, but barring those things, um, the labor is the labor, and generally, uh, I think that too much is made of women being over 35 and pregnant. I mean, there's some, this arbitrary number of 35 years old that suddenly your body falls apart and you're called advanced maternal age or some ridiculous thing like that. And I'm trying to dispel that. And I just recently put, put a paper out that uh, of 135 births that I do out of the hospital because that's what I do um, in the last five years. And age made no difference as far as outcomes uh, whatsoever. For, for carrying? For carrying, laboring, delivering, okay. C-section rate. All that stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of paranoia out there. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and of course, the internet, as wonderful as it is, and people wouldn't be seeing this if they didn't have the internet. It's very misleading. Uh, there's a lot of negative information out there. A lot of times, the sensational stuff is what leads, and the normal stuff is buried, uh, and you can't really just dis uh, discern between the two. And then, so let's say if you do get pregnant in the early 40s, um, like I did, then there's the high chance that you'll have a miscarriage. Isn't it higher? Because slightly higher. It's slightly higher. The risk, this is another thing that people don't uh, really know about uh, the human body, is the risk of any early conception, no matter what age you are mis miscarrying, okay. is about 30%. Okay. All right? So one out of every three women who can see whether they're 20 or 30 or 40 are going to miscarry. It's going to be slightly higher in older women because, because they're slightly more likely to have a baby with a chromosomal abnormality and and nature is actually pretty good about that. Most chromosomal, chromosomal abnormalities will miscarry. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of nature's way of taking care of something that wasn't going to survive anyway. Um, but it's still, it's around 30 to 35 percent, the miscarriage rate. And once you see a heart beating, which is, or you hear a heart beating, which can be done by ultrasound in about six weeks after your last menstrual period, the chance of miscarriage falls to about 5 percent. Okay. And once you get to about 10 weeks, it falls to about one half of 1 percent. 
Okay, and then what about the women, you know, freezing their eggs? Is there a cutoff there? Because uh, if a woman thinks, oh gosh, I'm 40 now and I still want kids, I better freeze my eggs. Is that too late? Are the eggs not viable? Well, um, in, the, in those cases, you really should talk to a fertility specialist that, that specializes in that. But I will tell you that this is my knowledge. Um, there, there are blood tests that you can do on around the third day of your menstrual cycle, which help to predict for lack of a better term, the fertilizability of your eggs. Oh. And if you, those numbers aren't really good, most honorable fertility specialists will tell you that it's probably not worth saving your eggs. Now, you can still do it. Um, they're not going to absolutely say no that you can't do it, but it might be better at that point if those numbers exist to, to look toward a surrogate. Mm -hmm. uh, not a surrogate pregnancy, but a surrogate the egg donor. Okay. Um, and, and go that route. But uh, you can, you can uh, I think that ideally women should freeze their eggs in their 20s, but women in their 20s are not thinking about this sort of right, thing because right. we're all idealistic. We do believe that, you know, I'm going to get married by the time I'm 30 or the time I'm 35 and it's not going to be a problem. And suddenly you're 35 or 38 and then you don't think about it and suddenly you're 40 and now you're thinking about it. But actually the eggs are not as healthy as they were 15 years before that. And I find uh, that the woman, so let's say a woman comes to me and she's 40, she says, well, I can still get pregnant, but she's single, she hasn't met the man, so she still has to find that man. He's not going to, they're not going to hop in bed the minute they meet on the first date and try to conceive. They want to date, they want to maybe spend time together, get married, and then a couple more years go by. So that's why I always tell, if a woman comes to me and she's 30, 33, 34, oh, I want to have a family. I said, let's get on this now. We've got to, it could take years to find the right well, person. Well, right? Or those women are ones that you could suggest to them about freezing their eggs. Or freeze the eggs, okay. Early 30s is a real reasonable time to do it. I don't think it's outrageously expensive. Oh, um, okay. But again, I'm not an expert in that. I don't do that myself. But there are plenty of people around the west side of Los Angeles that, that do egg freezing. And then, but the implanting itself and all that, isn't that quite expensive? That's why these celebrities, they can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on the, the in vitro. Each, each I hear, it's eight ten thousand dollars $10,000 a pop, and then it doesn't yeah, really it, work. It, it, it may very well be eight or $10,000 to, to do an in vitro cycle yeah. or even a little bit more. But the truth is, is that ultimately, three, four years from now, that eight or $10,000 will probably mean nothing. And getting pregnant and having a baby is the probably the biggest deal the most, the most important thing a woman ever does in her life, probably the two most memorable moments in her life are her wedding and the birth of her children. And uh, wait, you know, um, so spend, and, and, we, and we don't have any problem spending thousands of dollars on our wedding. So to, to the idea of putting some money aside and spending it on, on preparing the proper way to, to get pregnant, especially if you're still undecided, does it, it still makes a lot of sense that way. I mean, we should we should invest more. We shouldn't just look at our our insurance card and say I'm going to this guy because he's in my book and I mean he's been doing my pap smear for ten years and uh, I'll just have him get me with my pregnancy. No, you should do a little more investigating. You would never do that with your wedding. You would never just say oh I'm going to go to the justice of the peace and uh, I'll let them pick out what I'm going to wear and and I may not there'll be people at my wedding that I don't like and, and you would never do that. We plan those things, so you should yes. do the same thing with you know, planning on your children, because when you're 90, 80, 90 100, you know, years old, you, you may not remember a lot, but you'll remember the de every detail of the birth of your baby. Oh, that's beautiful. That's, that is so true. It's like if you, you're going to do one thing, have a, a smaller uh, wedding and, and uh, spend money on that child. Yeah. Another thing I tell people, too, is when they're, when they're pregnant um, or if they're trying to get pregnant and they, and they have, want to have a birthday party or if they're pregnant they have a baby shower, rather than have people give you gifts that you'll never use, is have them donate money or have them put money so that you can either save it for in vitro or you could save it for, uh, say, cord blood stem cell collection or something that you might not otherwise afford that makes a lot more sense than getting uh, so many onesies that your kid never wears anyway. Because oh, the garage that a, is amazing. That's an amazing idea. I love yeah. this. You're, you are a wealth of information. Now, what about... Uh, there, <laughs> I've, long, I've known you a long time. So I know. Just, there, uh, There's... Uh, so it seems like there's more and more infertility. So many younger women are having problems. Do you think that that's because of the, uh, um, whatever, the bat, the pesticides in our foods and the pollution and everything's polluted, the water, the food, the junk that we're eating, the chemicals? Do you think that's uh, one of the reasons? Because don't you find that it seems like more people are having trouble uh, conceiving? I, I, I don't see that at all. But again, I, I, don't, I don't have a, you, you know, you better, a better interview would be somebody who does fertility work to see if it's actually changed. 
quite frankly, I don't think, Marlo, that it's really changed dramatically. I think people are delaying childbearing. Okay. So you don't see the 18, 19, 20-year-olds, not at least not in Los Angeles. You may see that in flyover country in the middle, in the Midwest. Right. You may see younger women uh, having babies and or, uh, you know, people in with Mormons or Mennonites or uh, Orthodox Jews. You know, they may start earlier. They have larger families. But yes. most people are, are delaying, like we talked about very early on, they're delaying it because they got, oh, they got to go to college. They got to go to grad school. Then I want to live my life a little bit. Oh, I got a job now. I can't just get pregnant and and, and uh, take leave from my job. I'm, I'm going to lose my job. So they put it off and they put it off. But I don't think there's more things. I don't think there's any problem with pesticides or gluten or radiation or okay. anything else that's causing more more trouble than that. Yeah, I, you I, know, I, it's really not fair. Us women, we don't have a very long window. By the time you grow up and get some sense in your head and learn a few things, it's like, you, ooh, you got a few years left to, to do this, right? And then the men... Well, I, yeah, no, I, 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 well, that's true, but that's always been, but that's true, but that's, that's a biological thing, and if you yeah. think about, you put away all the sociology and you just think pure, simple biology, our bodies are still not much different than we were 10,000 years ago. Yeah, we're taller, we got better teeth, that sort of thing, <laughs> but we're not that much different, um, and, and, and then the lifespan was probably 25 years old. Right. Oh, you had to reproduce, you had to, you got your period when you were 12 years old. Women, uh, females in those times probably didn't have very many periods because they had a period, they got pregnant, they had a baby, they breastfeed, they got another period, they got pregnant again, they miscarried, they got pregnant again, they had a baby, yeah. then they got eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of that's sort of what it was. And so our bodies biologically, the primitive part of our body is still thinking that you should be getting pregnant when you're 17, 18, 19 years old. You're not supposed to be living to be 85, 95 years old um, biologically. There, you know, I mean, this is very cruel, but nature has a purpose. And it, really, the only purpose on the planet for any biological species is to reproduce and die. And that's it. Shopping so once, is not one of those things on that list. <laughs> shopping, no, shopping for no, shoes no. and purses. Right? <laughs> no, going, well, and, going, and going to hockey games or uh, going to movies is also not on that list either. But but we obviously have a beautiful culture with beautiful art, and and there you know there are negatives, but there are many many positives. But but biologically, we are meant to reproduce and then die, and you pass on, and that's why women you know are want to select men who can give them the best babies, and that happens in the bird species, and it happens in other mammal species, and in in most mammal species except humans, by the way, or at least most of the great apes, you know one male impregnates all of females. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, uh, screwed. And so we speaking, got... speaking of the males, uh, what about the the? I've heard older men. People will say, "Oh, oh let's Larry King, for example. He's had babies when he's older. Rod Stewart. Uh, I don't know Harrison Ford. We, uh, some of these guys. Oh, right. Now, does the quality of the sperm? Because they'll say, "Yeah, but the men's sperm it, the uh, is not a good quality, and there could be complications because of that." Yep. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. That's true. There is an increased risk of having a chromosomal abnormality. Uh, in in older fathers as well, okay, or or you know fret or what's called um, uh, you know, a microarray break, you know, breakages in the chromosomes where you have a little piece of one or deletions or that sort of thing. That's increased in older fathers too. It's not quite as as significant as in older mothers. So, um, but it is it is definitely true. And I and, get there's this phenomenon here. I get so many men coming to me, uh, signing up for the matchmaking service. They're 50, in their fifties or sixties, and they want a, either never had a kid, men never had a kid, or they want more. And I don't know if, if wanting more is just an excuse to date younger women. <laughs> but uh, not <laughs> touching that one. There, there's a <laughs> but there's a lot of that, and that's a challenge for me because they need a woman in really in the thirties to to do that. Unless they can go either way, then. Well, you could, you could find a woman in her forties who hasn't had a kid or wants another kid, and and if she doesn't get pregnant on her own, you and you know, you people who use your matchmaking service probably can afford right. To, if they're not set I, on having it for sure, yeah. Doing, uh, yeah. And a lot of people see the other thing is people often want they, there's something about having your own genetic material passed on. I mean, that's a biological thing too. It takes you know, it takes more of an altruistic, uh, evolved person to say, I'm going to raise this adopted kid, or I'm going to raise this kid who's got you know, some other man's uh, sperm because my sperm count was lower or whatever and uh, as my own because it is your own. I mean, it really is your own. And well, it really does. And, and going through, it's not as important as, as who the parent, who the acting parent is. 
And going through the in vitro and all this, this is not just uh, something like easy. This is painful. It's it's can be very emotional. Uh, it's not something that I would have uh, ever. I'm I'm a chicken anyway. I wouldn't have put, done it. Uh, but it's thrown around. Oh, you can just do in vitro. You can do this and that. But it's uh, could be a long, painful, and emotional uh, process. Yeah, very emotional. I mean, you know, obviously, not only are you are you. Uh, you know, the more the more you want something in your life, the the more anxious you are about about whether you're going to get it or not. And by that point, you know, these people really want to have a baby, so they're 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 on edge about everything. Plus, sometimes you're being injected with hormones as the woman, and so that can make you a little bit mm -hmm. uh, more on edge, that sort of thing. Painful not is not pain, as painful as you might think. I mean, for some of the stuff you you put to sleep for, or you're anesthetized a little bit. The, the the techniques have gotten really good now and the success rates have gotten really good now too and especially because they're now using they're, they're now screening for people who have excuse the terminology but for lack of a better term on bad eggs or bad sperm and they're, they're suggesting that people go with donor stuff so they're getting much better results and they're not putting in you know 10 eggs like they did before you're not going to have octomom ever uh, hopefully oh, ever yes that is really okay. no right. most people are putting in one or two because uh, and, and twins now by the way twins when i was uh, a resident in the early 80s uh, the rate of twins in the in the united states was what one in 80 and now it's about one in 30 mm -hmm. and that's all because of um of ivf right, uh, right. You're, seeing, you're seeing a lot more twinning because the rates are even if you could just put in two eggs the chances of them both being uh, take both taking are very uh, are very high. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, so the so the takeaway here for for women who want to have kids, what are the top three things they need to be thinking of doing? Start early. <laughs> just, you know, uh, watch your priorities about what's important in life. Okay. You know, I, again, when you're 20 years old, you don't know squat anymore because life is so difficult and so complex, but. Um, make sure that you're going to college or, or grad school or getting a job for the right reason. There's nothing wrong with raising children. It's probably the best thing. I mean, some of the happiest families that I've ever seen are the ones that have several kids and, and the mother is homeschooling the kids. And, you know, that's obviously not for everybody, although some people in California might consider it now with, with the passage of Assembly Bill 277, the vaccine bill. But hopefully that will get overturned. Um, but uh, so reassess your priorities. Uh, don't wait as long as, don't think that you can do this in your 40s. I mean, you can, but it's less likely, and it's likely to involve some of the things you talked about, the discomfort and the craziness that goes on with IVF. And, um, you know, I, I, I really don't have another piece of advice okay. because every, everybody's advice is different, but understand that you can't alter biology. There's a, there, right now, we, we don't have a way of altering biology. Um, I'm not sure it will be a good thing when we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't, I'm not going to miss not being around when we have cloning and other things that, that goes on and we, and we are start picking all, we want all our kids to be six foot five inch star soccer players. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, who's, who's going to, who's going to drive a truck and well, we're gonna have anybody yeah, they're there. all going to be models, right? <laughs> That's right. No, I mean, it, it is a little bit, uh, 198 or Orwellian uh, to think about what might happen. But I, I, I think that really ultimately, if you're 35 or 36 and still single, you should really consider looking into freezing your eggs. Okay. Uh, prior to that, you should look into, if you want to have a family, then you have to make, you know, I'm not a relationship person, that's your job, but I think you have to understand that you know, there's no Mr. or Mrs. Perfect out there. You've got to pick the person that that you seem to get along with and is a good friend and think will be a good parent to your children. Well, this is amazing uh, advice because they're, the divorce rate is huge and people are waiting for that perfect person. They've got a list this tall and often it this long and often it's six. the guy has to be six feet tall and over, make a million a year. He's got to it look like this. Then the guys are waiting for the girls with the perfect chest size and eye color and uh, size two or zero and all of that with the madness that comes with my job. But it's true. Look for someone with those qualities. Are they going to be a good parent? Are they going to be with you through thick and thin? Are they going to love you when you get the wrinkles? Or what if you lose an arm or a leg? What if your boobs start sagging? You know, are they going to be there? So I think that's really something we've got to kind of look for. We, we, yeah, I was going to say for, for your business, by the way, when a woman is thinking about the guy who's six foot tall and has a million dollars and stuff like that, and and you get the the sixty year old guy who wants the thirty five year old woman. That thirty five year old woman really has to reconsider the fact that, okay, I'm gonna have a person with this guy. And he's, my kid's gonna be in 
high school and this guy's going to be 80 years old. You're right, right. All right? And well, that's so, why it's you know, hard for it me. Just, just, yeah. you know, again, I'm not trying to diss all the men who are looking for the 30-year-old because that's, that's biology as well because biologically men want to just, you know, pass their seed on to as many women as possible. That's that's biology. Monogamy is not the norm for our species. That's a right. social construct. Yes. Uh, yes. So, you know, men should think more like more carefully about getting involved with somebody who's much younger than them. Women should be more thoughtful about getting involved with somebody who's old. You want to find somebody who you're compatible with, who is going to want to go to Chuck E. Cheese's and who's going to want to sh sh uh, schlep to the soccer field and ballet and all that stuff during the day. Um, it, it's hard. It's it's not a it's not the life that uh, that you think it is. And when by the time you're 60, you're pretty independent. To suddenly go back to that, you, you, it sounds beautiful. It sounds nostalgic, but it may not be everything you kind of. It's kind yeah, of I tell you guys, you really want to go through diapers again and carpools and soccer runs and all this getting up in the middle of the night in, in your 60s and 70s. No, I was going to say I want to hire. We'll hire a nanny. Yeah, you know, well, if you can. Because you don't want. You don't necessarily want someone else raising your, well, I wouldn't, but I, I can't speak for other people. And that gets to the whole point of this whole thing is that, that everything I've said is sort of, it, it's a generalization, it's a population, it's statistics. It, it's not about the individual. Everybody, every individual has to look for themselves. And, and some people will be at 45, will have sex one time and get pregnant. Mm -hmm. But that would not be the norm. That would not be the norm. I read an article by a doctor who was in practice 35 years. He said in his whole 35 years of practice, he had never not once seen a 45-year-old woman get pregnant with her own eggs. He, he had never, you know, seen that, seen it. So, you know, it, it is, uh, I think it's like... I have, one, I have a few times, but I, I really, it's not statistically significant. I couldn't make a, a scientific statement out of it. Right, that. right. So, anyway, it's the whole the whole uh, takeaway here is uh, start planning early and uh, look look at your priorities and how you want your life to look. What you want yeah, your and, don't, and don't believe some of the myths that you hear that that you can have kids in your 40s just that easily. It, it isn't that easily, uh, you know, overall, it, it's not. So just think about that, if, you know, when you talk, when you show this to your clients. Thank you, Dr. Stu. And you guys, he has a podcast and a website and a blog, and I'm going to put all the... Yeah, let me give my website out because yeah. I do, I, I just had a paper published, and, I, and there's links to that, and I do a podcast on all topics, OB, GYN. We also talk about things like we had one podcast when my daughter was in high school, uh, the title of the podcast was uh, To Coachella or Not to Coachella. <laughs> and she was 17 and she wanted to go to Coachella. And we had this debate um, uh, for our 35-minute podcast with my two guys on my, that, I, that I do it with. And, and it turns out we decided not to. And now this year she's 18 and she did get to go to Coachella and she had a great time. But So we don't always talk about topics that are uh, obstetrical, but we talk about things that are in the news. Mm -hmm. And uh, my website is www.birthinginstincts.com. And there's uh, posters on there that you can get to my uh, Facebook page and my and my uh, podcast page. And also, I wrote, I wrote a book called Fearless Pregnancy, and you can get to that page as well. Awesome. Well, I'll put all the links below. And I really thank you for taking your time and, uh, you know, busting the myths. Thanks, Thanks. Marla. Bye.